OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So we are doing Make It Stick, Vocabulary and Technology Come Together. My name is Susan Gare and I'm an OTAN subject matter expert. And my name is Christy Reyes. Um, I'm a teacher at in Miracosta College's continuing education. Um, I will put this link in the um, chat in, in just a moment. These are the link, this is the link to the slideshow you have right here. So if you see anything, you wanna revisit it, you'll have access to the slides. And if you wanna take notes, you could do what Melinda said with the side-by-side. -side. Okay, so we're gonna do the poll. So here's a little poll and, and go ahead and Whatever tools you're familiar with, tell us. So we get an idea of who's in our audience today. Christy, are you seeing the poll too? Yeah. Okay. So we'll give you, let's see, we see three, five. So about five or so of you haven't um, selected yet. It is multiple selection, at least it should be, I hope it is. And so we'll see, it looks like um, Quizlet is running ahead. I can only, of, sorry, I can only do one. So oh, once I do sorry. one, it erases the other yeah. one. Baron said the same thing. So I bummer. guess it's not multiple. Um, this is a bummer, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, okay. Well, we'll just ask you then. Should we go ahead yeah. and show? Yeah, um, go ahead in the chat box and put down the tools that you're familiar with. How's that? And introduce yourself at the same time. And we'll give a yeah. minute for that since the poll didn't really, I'll share the results, but it's not giving us information that we need. So yeah, if you can just type in, um, if you're a teacher where you are um, teaching at and what your subject area is, if you're an administrator, or some other position, if you can let us know what that is and where you are located. And, and then this, just type this in- This way we'll know, we'll know how to, I'm sorry, Christy, didn't mean to interrupt you there. Okay, we'll know what to focus on because we'll know what you guys are familiar with. Okay, thank you, Marin. Um, she's familiar with Padlet and Quizlet and um, Kim, okay, Kim is, has done it all. Kim, not all you, you but could be here <laughs> with us but please share your ideas as well Kim for things that we're going to show um, you could share it uh, in the chat or you can unmute yourself and, and um, tell how you may use some of these tools differently than what we're going to show and let's see Sabrina um, okay and Cupertino Quizlet and then we have Padlet Quizlet and MLS discussions and hopefully everybody knows what LMS means by now, but if you don't, that's okay. It means learning management system. Um, the California community colleges have adopted Canvas. Um, before that, where I work, we use Blackboard, but there's also Google Classroom. You can get a free course for your class um, through OTAN and that would be Moodle. Um, so there are several out there. And so we're seeing a lot of Quizlet here. Yay. Yeah, so Quizlet that seems to be run, winning anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Quizlet seems to be a tried and true tool. It's been around. I was looking at my lists and I think um, 2015 or 16 was when I really started using Quizlet a lot more. Before that, I didn't really have time and it seemed like a, a lot of work. But once I built my lists, I could always go back and slightly modify them. Okay, I think we have pretty much everybody. So let's go on to the next. Okay. Oops, sorry. So this, these are the objectives of this um, time we have together. By the end of this session, um, we think that you will understand this six step process and be able to apply it. Um, so I'm gonna tell a little bit more about that in a moment, but it's a way to ensure that your students are getting multiple exposures and practice with new words. Um, this is OTAN specializing in technology integration. So we hope, even though it looks like you know many different tools, that you're going to learn new one tech technique 
for teaching vocabulary or one new tool or a different way to use a tool that you than you have been using it in the past. And we just hope that you'll feel comfortable integrating this technique of using technology in six steps for teaching vocabulary um, to your students. And our goal for this session is to learn at least one new idea. Maybe it's an, somebody sharing an idea or something, but hopefully at the end, we'll come back and revisit and you'll be able to answer yes to everything. That's our goal. Yes, and this is meant to be really interactive. So it may even be that you learn something from someone else besides the facilitators today. And that's, that's the whole point, to share ideas. So um, we want to ask you this, and I'm going to, if you have a second device like a phone and you want to scan that QR code, you can. I'll open this and share this in the chat unless you are able to do that really quick, um, Susan. Um, it's a Padlet wall. Um, Padlet, within the last year or so, they changed quite a bit and there are many more different types of walls than there used to be. Like there is a map. And so um, if you're teaching in ESL, you maybe want to ask your students to put a pin on that map and put a video and write a little bit where they're from, but it is a perfect tool as you're gonna see, and maybe some of you know, for having students use uh, vocabulary. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. I'm almost that. there, I'm almost okay. there. Okay, there. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and open that and just demonstrate in, in case you aren't familiar with Padlet. So usually you can double tap or double um, click anywhere or if there's any problems with that, you go to the right bottom corner and there's a pink um, button and you click on it. And then something, a box, a text box appears like this. Usually I tell my students for the title, if I want to know who is posting, I ask them to type their name for the title. So I'll just demonstrate that. And then what we want you to answer is this question, what does it mean to know a word? If a person or a student really knows a word, what does that mean? What does that look like? What are they able to do? So then I would just type right here. If you are so inclined, you want to add something, the, the best way to add an image, video, or just about anything on Padlet nowadays is to go to three dots and look at all the different options. And actually the look of this just changed recently. Yeah, I'm gonna so, say it looks um, very different. Yeah, so you could um, do a search and put in an image. Um, you can put a link to any website. You can add a YouTube video. You can even put in a GIF. So that might be fun. So go ahead and um, we will um, just take a moment to have you go to the Padlet wall type in your name and what you think it means to know a word. And if you feel like posting something more, you're welcome to do that. And we'll have a look at that before we move on. So we'll give you about a minute or two to do that. Oh, that's a good question, Marin. Um, let me look on my Padlet on the phone. I think there's a way to do it, but I think it's not as clear cut on the phone. Mm, that's a good question, yes. So there are three, I opened it up now, I'm on the app. I have the okay. app and there are three dots. So I wonder if you need to have the app on your phone. Yeah, I have it all, but it's on the phone. It's on, um, it's the old version where Christy that it used to look like. Mm, okay. And it works, but you. I think you have to have the app. Okay. And the app is free. And if you're going to use Padlet with your students, I highly recommend you have them download the app. So Long says they can use the word appropriately in context. Great. Kelly says you can understand it in a sentence. Maggie says the word is used in a correct way. Christy says, Something unintelligible. <laughs> I know. Oh, let me delete that. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Somebody oh, put Maggie. It again. How cute. <laughs> we'll give you one or two more seconds here. Can recognize the meaning when spoken or written and can use it appropriately. Oh, that's good. 
And these are all really good ideas. And we don't think that the way most of, at least the way I used to teach vocabulary, where we do a reading and the word was there and the students would make a vocabulary list and then, okay, you'll have the test and you'll learn the vocabulary word. That's not the best way to do vocabulary. And that's why we have learned this process. Thank you. And I would just add to that, like, um... I, you know, when I found out about Quizlet, I was having students just use Quizlet. And while that is really great for retrieval practice, they're not getting to the point where they're using. It's more just checking their understanding. So um, I think what someone just posted here, that, that the students can recognize the meaning when spoken or written and can use it in their own speaking and writing, that they can use it appropriately as Long said. Um, so not just receptive, hearing it and understanding, um, reading it and understanding, but productive, writing and using it, speaking and using the word. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that now and we'll continue. So um, thank you for that, yes. There is something known as receptive versus pro, uh, productive use of vocabulary. And obviously, if we're teaching the right kind of words, the words that occur frequently in English or that are on the academic word list and students will need to go on to college and careers, we need to make sure that we build in a lot of scaffolding and recycling in our lesson plans so students get multiple exposures and they'll be able to get to that productive level as well. So people always ask, well, why do we have to spend so much time on vocabulary? And Keith Fultz said this at a uh, TESOL conference. We need to train our students to be aggressive vocabulary hunters. You need to get words and lots of them. Words are starting points. Without words, you can't communicate. Words are important. And so words sometimes can be more important than the grammar, grammatical structure, because if you don't have any words to put in the structure, you can't say anything. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Robert Marzano. If you've heard of him, can you type yes in the chat? Um, he is not specific to adult ed or anything like that. He's more in the K through 12 realm. But what he's written so many books and what he does is take all the research on good educational practices and he, he puts it into ways that we can implement those great practices in our, our classrooms. So um, a few years back, I was using Quizlet and, you know, come on, let's, let's have fun with Quizlet and all this. And students were not getting to the productive level. They were not able to use the words that we were um, practicing um, spontaneously to apply them to different contexts and so on. So I started browsing and figuring out, well, how can I do this better? I just taught some words yesterday and here we are today and they didn't remember any of the words. And um, what he proposes is the six step process. So I'm gonna um, just talk very briefly about that just so you can see where we're integrating technology into these six steps. So the first step is explain. And um, with explain, we're doing direct e explicit um, instruction with this process. It's not just um, students kind of guessing the word from context and moving on. No, we're, we're really taking the time to teach the words. So with the explain step, we first explain a new vocabulary word with a description. It could be an explanation, an example. With some of the um, survival or beginning level vocabulary, um, like in ESL, we would probably use a picture if it's a concrete word for students to understand. Um, so the next step is to give students an opportunity to restate to restate the information they learned about this new word using that word, but in their own words. So they're putting it into contexts that are personalized that relate to them, okay? Next we have construct. And in this step, um, students make a graphic representation. And then um, we have an activity after that in which students engage and discuss in structured conversations. Finally, students apply their word knowledge in learning games. It's really interesting that um, Marzano recommends never to skip the play step. He says that this is a really important step 
because um, having fun, um, students' inhibitions are lower, their effective filter is lower, and they're having to do the retrieval practice quickly, and they're going to have to use the vocabulary very spontaneously. So he says, never skip play. So we're going to take you through these steps with some different tools. I'm sure that you know lots of different tools that we could use in these different steps, but we're proposing things that are really simple to start off with. And as you, um, as you use this process more and more, you'll find tools that work best for you and your students. So the first step is explain. Okay. So I wanted to say one thing. Can you go back one slide? Sure. I wanted to say that Marzano doesn't call the third step construct. He calls it show, but we actually changed it because we think it's important for students to do something with the vocabulary. Thank you. Okay. So one of the things that I use for explaining is Thinglink, which is a free image where you can put images on top of images. And um, I did this for a low beginning remote classroom that was being taught by Elisa Takeuchi. And um, we were teaching the students, the goal of this class was to teach the students how to read the CDC website and to learn from it. Um, this was one lesson in a series of lessons on different things on the CDC website. So I have a video here. I'm just going to let you watch what this, what Thingling can do. Let me know if you can't hear it. I can't hear it. Oh, there we go. Hi, welcome to my lesson on wearing and making masks. This video introduction will help you understand how to work through this lesson. Fortunately, you've already clicked on number one, and here I am. So let me take you through the lesson. So you're going to click number two, which is your vocabulary, and you're going to click the got it here, and then you're going to click the got it here. And this will take you through the vocabulary. So here we have the opposite of down, uh, up, I think. So I'm going to, and then yes, you see I got it correct. So it says I have familiar, that's really good. Here's the second one. I have to look through the choices, rubber band, respiratory drop. Oh, I think it's a square cotton cloth. So let me click that. Ah, I got it right again. All right, I'm not sure what this is. Hmm, maybe he's breathing. Let's try it. Oh, nope, got it wrong. You see, it doesn't go to familiar. It says the correct answer is the person who lives in a certain place. Not sure. Try that again later. Opposite of top, bottom. Anyhow, you go through them. When you hit all 32 familiar, you'll be done. So after you finish this learn activity, you might want to practice some more. There is match, learn, test, flashcards, and spell. Spelling is really hard, but it's really good for your English if you have a chance. But the game match is really fun, and I always go with fun. So let's try that. So here we got to hit the got it. We start the game. So here, bottom, scissors, nope. Opposite top, bottom, good. Scissors, right, tuck, got it. Multiple layers, got it. Resident, got it. Dun, 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 got everything in 14.3 seconds. And I can play it again if I want to do even better, but I'm not gonna do that this time. So that's number two, your vocabulary. Remember, you can come back to your vocabulary at any time. Now here we have number three. This is an audio version of the reading. The reading is down here, but you might wanna listen to it first. Each slide is played two times. So you hit the play button and you will hear each slide two times. You can read along with it if you like. You can do it once and just listen, and then the second time, read along with it. Very good for your pronunciation. Here's a sample. Wearing masks and how to make them. Once. Wearing masks and how to make them. Introduction. Twice. So that's how you do that. Um, you can run it as many times as you want. When you're ready, you can just practice reading it. You can read through it aloud, or you can read it 
not allowed. It's up to you. you. Just go right through like this, hit each slide. You can also go like this if you want to skip around slides. You can do that. So that is number three. Number four is a movie on making a mask. So you can watch this movie. And if you have your own bandana, you can make a mask along with the movie and share it with your teacher later. So here's the mask that I made in the movie. You'll see it in the movie. So you just click that and it'll play the movie for you. When you're done, you close it. Number five is how you get your certificate. With number five, you're going to put in your email address so we know where to send your certificate. You're going to put in your name and then you answer the questions. There's only a few. After you finish answering the questions, the most important button for you is the submit button right here. So you click that submit button and that will send the certificate to your email. And you're done with the lesson. Congratulations. I hope you stay safe and please wear a mask. So you can go to the next slide. Okay. I would go back to the thing link slide, sorry. So this was um, the way this lesson worked with the students at low beginning. People say, oh my gosh, it's so fast and, and my students can't handle that. Well, this was a lesson I did with the class. We actually went through this whole process together, except for number five that they had to do on their own. And then the video you saw was what I call a watch me video. So the students can watch over and over again how to go through the lesson and they can do it little by little. And so on the last question on their certificate says, did you do the, did you do the, redo the video again? Did you go through the lesson again at home? And they, most of them answered yes. One or two of them answered no, but most of them answered yes. So this was the point of this lesson was to introduce vocabulary that is on the CDC website that is used over and over again, and to get them familiar with that vocabulary. Quick question, Susan. So the number one link was a link to a video. Then, and then number two is a link to Quizlet. Quizlet. Number three is reading with a with the spoken text. So it was a video. And then the reading on a slideshow. Mm -hmm. And number four was video, how to make your mask. Mm -hmm. And number five was a Google form. Is that right? Right. That's right. And oh, all wow. the vocabulary from the reading was from the CDC website. In fact, I just used the real vocabulary from the CDC website. And these students learned these vocabulary words, which were critical at the time that I was teaching the lesson. So this is almost like a learning management system in a way. You could You can make these thing links and your lesson could be right there every single day. There's may a I question give a shameless? You. May I give a shameless sure, plug? Yes, I'm teaching, and Melinda, pump in when when day it is. I'm doing a thing link workshop for everybody. That Melinda. would be great. So if you want to know. learn more, um, look for uh, Susan Gare's OTAN thing link. Um, Melinda's going to post that. There's a question for you, um, Susan, from Sabrina. Can you embed the thing, thing link into an LMS? Yes, you can. You can embed okay. the thing. And you know what else it has? It has the immersive reader. So if oh. students have an issue, it, it will read it for them through Microsoft. So let me see if I got that right. So if the student couldn't read this, it would the immersive reader would read tutorial for thing link. It would read I, what's I think, on the Yeah, screen. I think okay. if I go to, yeah, and I think if the reading here, if I was actually on the thing link, not in the movie, and I mm -hmm. clicked on the immersive reader, it would read what was in there. Wow. Very robust tool, everybody. So watch and, for Susan's um, workshop on thing link. There it is. It's April, April 29th at 11 a.m. And I want to say one more thing about thing link is I don't have a paid account. So I can do everything you see here, including I can add 360 photos into my image. All The only thing I can't do with a free account is manage students. So if I wanted to have my class have their own thing link, I would need to spend and get this the fee of $35 a year mm -hmm. and I can manage all my students in thing link. That's not so, that's not so bad, $35 no. a year. Um, I, I probably would pay it if I had students, but I'm retired, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wow, this is a great tool, not just for vocabulary, but I can see lots of different things that um, you could be introducing new vocabulary with a picture that you upload with 
um, different little hot spots or those numbers like you have there all over and they could they could read the word they could hear the word they could even maybe watch a video about a new word that would be a great way to explain some new vocabulary that's awesome so we go now from the explain step to the restate step and in this step students are rephrasing they're explaining in their own words and making a connection with the words. And it's really important that students come up with their own words once again, because they'll remember better than just repeating the words that you give to them. So I really like Padlet for restating because students can take control and, and restate what they learned. So I'm going to take you through a journey. And this was my beginning low class at uh, Mount Sac College. Uh, a couple of years ago. And we were studying, we were using the book we were using was teaching a lesson on adjectives. And there were, you know, some adjectives, thin, fat, the regular ones that are in a book. But I wanted my students to stretch outside the book. So I gave them the Oxford Picture Dictionary, and there's a chapter there on adjectives. And I had them do this on paper first. And I found this works really well with low beginning if you have them do it on paper first. I gave them these instructions one, two, three, four. Find one word that is new. Find a picture on the internet. They did that on their phone. Uh, post the picture. They couldn't do that right then, but they had the in picture on their phone. And number four was they were supposed to write a sentence with the picture about the picture. So I thought, okay, we had them. I had them do it. I went around the room. I made sure everybody did it. Then I opened up Padlet and I, I gave them the same instructions. And what I got was this one comment that said anonymous. Thick. So this person understood number one only, find one word that is new. So then I said, okay, I need to model better. I'm, I must not have modeled. So I found my picture and I took the word dangerous from the Oxford Picture Dictionary and I found my picture of a guy walking on the railroad tracks and I wrote the sentence, it is dangerous to walk on railroad tracks. So now I've given them the instructions, I've had them do it on paper, I've modeled it on the computer and I thought they're gonna get it, right? One person posts a question mark, like I don't have a clue what you're talking about. So I said, we need to shock them. And so I found this cat and I said, ugly. I figured they would know that word, it was in the book. This is an ugly cat. Well, what happened was absolutely phenomenal. So go ahead, hit the button, Christy. They had this incredible conversation about this cat and their vocabulary level was so far above anything I had ever seen before from them. And they were actually describing and discussing this cat and, and disagreeing with each other. And I just thought, is very, very ugly, is very beautiful. Don't is truth, the cat is very, very ugly. Is an Egyptian cat. The cat does not produce allergies for not having hair. And I will believe that they probably Googled the word or a Spanish speaker with a cognate. Aha, I know it's an Egyptian cat, but they don't have hair and they aspect is ugly, so it's different to usual. This was a very complicated comparison structure that they were able to express. And then everybody's laughing. So this is what happened. And then what they did was absolutely phenomenal. Look at their look at their work. I mean, they that was it. That was all they needed to be able to do this activity. And they were able to um, they were able to comment on each other's stuff. Um, they found great pictures. They wrote beautiful sentences. They corrected each other's sentences. It was an incredible display of language and action. And I just wanted to take you on that journey because I think that journey shows that it's not just, you don't start like this. It's a process that they build up to and they did a really great job of restating in this work. Susan, I love what you did with this. So I'm thinking how I would maybe, because they had a book and they were in person and I'm, I'm thinking how I could adjust this just a little bit for more advanced class and that's fully online, at least we meet in Zoom, is um, maybe the first time I would put um, breakout rooms and um, pair students up or put them together. Someone who is really um, feeling confident and shows a lot of skills with technology with another person who maybe their English is better. And that could be kind of, you know, the stepping stone to getting them to do this independently. 
That's so a great idea. Yeah. Let me, I'm going to share the screen now so I can just, I'm not going to show you how to do everything in Padlet, but I will share with you a few things that you want to know about um, in Padlet. Oh, I can stop you from sharing. I like that. <laughs> okay, can you see my Padlet screen? Not yet. Not yet that I'm, I'm sharing the wrong screen. So this is good to know. How many of you have done that before? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, it should be right now. No? Are you seeing the Padlet? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I, this is my account. I have a lot of Padlets. You're only allowed to have three for free. The reason why I have so many Padlets is it used to be free. And when they went to the pay model, they let you keep all the Padlets you had. So I have a lot, but I, I have to remake them all the time and it's no problem. So even though I'm up to my, my, I have all my free ones taken, I just delete one and make a new one. So I'm gonna make a Padlet. And then you have these different choices. The one that I really like the best and the one that you saw that I used is shelf because shelf, you can categorize things. Um, I think in that one, I actually use wall because um, they were putting their work anywhere. But when you're remote with the students, shelves work better because you can organize. So I'm just gonna show you a shelf. And automatically, all your editing is done over here. And you see how it just pops right up and you can change this. I always put instructions here. And then this is very important. I don't know if you can see it. Let me make it more centered screen. This is the URL. So you see my URL here, address padlet.com slash Susan Gare. This is ridiculous. You don't want your students to learn that. So you can just put down something. Uh, let's see, 2019 is what I was going to say, something like that. And then that's the URL the students would use. And then here you have your wallpaper. Um, I always tell my students to pick solid colors, but of course they don't listen to me and they usually do these funny things that are hard to read. Um, but I like solid colors. So that's where you would do that. All of your stuff is being done here. You can change your font style. Um, this one here where it says new post position, if you want to have your instructions say, stay on the top, you need to pick last. And that means, no, first, no, last, correct. I'm sorry, last. You pick last and that will keep your instructions up there. If you pick first, the people who write, their posts will appear first. So it's opposite of what you think. So you pick last. Now, always make sure you click the comment button because really the power of this tool is the students communicating with each other. So you really want the students to communicate. And I will tell you, my low beginning students had no problem knowing how to comment. They are Facebook mavens and they know how to comment. comment. So that was one of the things that I learned at that class is that they want to comment on each other's work. And here you can also do, this It wasn't so good for them. I like this, the stars where they can review up one to five stars. You know, that's how Amazon works. That's how a lot of online platforms work. So by teaching the students about the stars, you can teach them how to research for items that they wanna buy. But um, I haven't had as much success at the low beginning level getting students to do that. But so like is okay, they, they know how to like. So that worked really well. So I don't use these two down here because we don't need to require approval in ESL. And I, I, this is a really useful tool even in ESL because some students don't understand the strength of their words. So it will actually replace any words that are swear words with emojis. So that's nice to, to put on. So the, the next thing we need to do is make sure that students can write. And that is, we have settings here, and then we have these three dots, and we have modify. Is that where it is, Christy? That's where I always forget. I think it's in the share where you- um, Okay, right, you share, sure, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is really important, and the fact that I have to ask Christy how to do it every time shows you it's not that easy. <laughs> um, you have to allow the visitors that they can write, and right now it says that they can write. You don't want it to be secret. Um, you want to make it so that they can write. Where do I, how come I can't change the settings here though? Um, choose the change privacy, I think. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. So these are your options. Thank you. This is where we want to make sure that I want it to be public. 
because I like the world to see my students work. And um, and make sure here you have can write. Um, now, I have given my students edit privileges once in a while, but it was very, uh, very intentional. If I, I'm asking students to correct things, like I might make a Padlet wall with some vocabulary errors and the students would have to go through and change the words out. So then you would want the students to be able to edit. But otherwise, I would say just write. And then there you go, you save it, make sure you save it or it won't work. So that's just in a nutshell how to make a Padlet wall. And I will now stop sharing. Then we will continue. If you have any questions, go right ahead and ask. I'm just curious, can you um, all share in the chat? Have you used Padlet before for having students produce vocabulary at all? If you can type yes or no in the chat, no? Okay, so that it has so many uses really, but this would be great because they could put a picture or video with their definition, their own sentence. Oh, thank you, Maggie. That's awesome. Made a lesson yeah. today. Just learned it. Uh, I have a question. Uh, are you done? Go ahead. Okay. My question is, so you had mentioned if we're on, um, you know, if we're on Zoom and we put people in breakout rooms will they all be working on the same padlet and so they'll be talking you know what i'm saying so we're yeah. going to be looking at the same padlet and people right. are going to be working on it but we aren't going to be you know it depends on how you want to set it up i would make just one padlet myself and mm -hmm. um and then share it in the link in the chat before you send students to their breakouts so that the chat usually will follow them to their breakout. Once in a while, it doesn't for some odd reason. So you'll just wanna show them in Zoom to click on the help button. So I've had that a couple of times, like we don't know what to do and they click on the help button and then I go and deliver it to them in their room. But um, go ahead. What's really cool about that is that the students can see what other groups are doing. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm curious about because uh, if, if they're all working in their own little group, they're going to see what the other people are doing because they're going to be putting stuff on there too, right? Yeah, right. So I just wonder how yes. that works. And they yeah. compete with each other. So it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other questions at all? Winnie, I think you'll love it. And I think as you saw, um, because there's writing that they can do there and it can be multimedia. I think if you don't have access to a learning management system like Moodle or Google Classroom or uh, Canvas, this could be, Padlet could serve as your discussion forum. So mm -hmm. with the commenting, students could um, reply to some questions using the vocabulary, and then they could post comments to each other's work, ask questions, and that could be like a discussion forum right there. But and the I difference is it's multimedia. They can, they can add so many different things to it. I wanna add that this is easily embeddable into an LMS as well. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. When you go to the share, you'll get the HTML code and you can um, post that. So that was. Um, Maggie, do you have a question? I see your oh, hand is. Sort of um, yeah, I just uh, can I share how I used it? Yeah, mm -hmm. please. OK, yeah, I just um, I was trying to figure out a way to get interactive, you know, work with um, we were putting um, I, I was teaching the four uh, parenting styles and, you know, I wanted them to try to read a description and then put it in the right category. So I used shelf, which, you know, I just learned how to do this. It's amazing. <laughs> and I divided it up into the four categories. And then I, I, I actually went ahead and wrote it all, all the little sticky notes out, you know, and then put them in there, but they can rearrange them so they can move them from one uh, column to another. So that's what we're oh. going to do when we get together is read it. If, is it in the right place or the wrong place? And, you know, they might have to move it here and there. And I, I was just thinking we could do that actually in breakouts and how it would be a competition to see which, uh, who could get to them first, right? Yeah. I love that. Um, that is an excellent idea. That is one of Marzano in another book. Um, he writes about having students categorize words and uh -huh. sort them and to be able to explain the connections. So that would be a great use of Padlet, having them use the, um, you said the shelf layout and right. arranging words. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else comments or questions before we move on? I think so we we've looked on. at, explain, go ahead. No, I think we can move on. Okay, all right. So we've looked at so far explain restate and then our next step is in the six step process 
is use having students construct. In other words, making some sort of graphical or picture visual to go along with the, the new word that they've learned. And Marzano says this step is very crucial for retention because as humans, um, most of our memories come into our brain through our eyes. We're very, you know, that, that's our strongest sense for learning new things. So by having a visual, there's an imprint on our memory. So with construct, there are many tools you could use, of course. Um, but the one we're going to talk about is Canva. That's not Canvas, but Canva. How many of you have used that again? If you can type yes in the chat, if you've used Canva at all. Yes, Kim? It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so in this example right here, this was a team project. And um, we were talking about different life stages. I think some of the dictionaries, the picture dictionaries have life stages. And um, I wanted students to really understand because when we got to, for example, um, elderly, they were telling me that 40 years old is elderly. <laughs> so, so I wanted them to demonstrate better that they understood the ages and some information about these words. So they used a Canva infographic template. Um, Canva has so many beautiful designs. I'm not a designer. I, I, I know when I see good design, but I'm not good at creating it. So the beautiful thing is Canva has beautiful different designs for all kinds of different work. They have templates for infographic posters, social media posts, magazine covers, brochures, flyers, comic strips. They're always adding new templates, different types all the time. So as you can see, this template did not have this information. They added their own words. So there were words there, but they just um, typed over them. They changed the color a bit and then they added images. So let me just show you Canva. I think I may have forgotten to sign in and okay. So now I'm signed in. So before I give a quick demo, I'll just show you, um, I wrote my syllabus in Canva. So it's not just for students. We can create lots of things for our classes. So I, I went on there and found a newsletter and I feel like my, my syllabus looks really beautiful. I'm really proud of it. I could not have designed something this beautiful myself on Microsoft Word. Um, it had these colors that went together. Um, it's really a great tool. There are many other things that I've done with um, Canvas. We have a student publication where we um, have students submit their poetry, their writing, um, plays um, that they've written, photography, uh, handicrafts, um, even um, artwork. And um, we, we publish that, we, they submit and then we choose and we publish that each year and um, this is just to show you. So you could, you could have students make a, a magazine of their vocabulary words over the semester or term that they're working with you. So um, I'll just show you this very briefly. This, it just, the wonderful thing is the design. It will give you the colors that are complementary. It will, um, there are many different fonts. I mean, look at this. This is really looks professional, doesn't it? So um, there, as my point is, there are just so many things you can do. I'll just demonstrate quickly an infographic, but as you scroll across the top, you can see all the different types of templates that are there. So maybe if I had students um, learning about words for food, or if I were in a culinary, if I was teaching a class like that, I might have my students make a menu. So there are many different menus. That would be really good practice for ESL, right? Because um, I know when I've studied other languages, I know words for food, but when I go to another country and look on the menu, I have no clue what those words are mean. So um, that could be a great um, experience for students. There's even a way to create a website, a certificate, photo books. I mean, the possibilities here for education are really endless, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just demonstrate really quick an infographic. Let me um, find where those are real quick. And you can always go here and, and search for the type of, um, type of template you're looking for. I think I may have passed it. <laughs> oh, a logo, that would be fun. Have students design a logo. Okay, I'm gonna have to search for it. Here we go, can't find it. 
and Zoom backgrounds. They have Zoom virtual backgrounds in here that are, are um, like videos that you could upload into your Zoom, um, your Zoom meetings and have as your backgrounds. So infographics, there we are. So you can see, you could start with blank if, you, if you're so inclined to do that, but I'm just looking for the style that I kind of like. And I kind of like this style right here, okay? So I just select it. And instead of things to do with your $50, what $50, first of all, but um, so I'm gonna call this six steps to vocabulary, okay? And I'm just gonna take out these words here. And you can resize by um, going to the corner and you can make everything a little appear just a little bit bigger so that you can see what you're doing better, right? Okay, so the first step is explain. This is not a picture for explain. So I can go here to the photos. There are many built-in photos, but some of them, see when you move over them, they'll say free, but some of them you, you can only use with a premium account, a paid account. So in that case, you can just go and choose one of your favorite um, share alike free, copyright free um, photo sites like Pixabay or Unsplash. And you can um, download a picture to your device, your computer, and you can upload it. So pretty much any picture you want, but they do have some nice ones here. So what I'm looking for is um, explain. Okay. Ooh, let's see, which one do I like? Um, let's see. I guess I like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna use this picture and um, I'm going to put it in place of this one. So I'm just going to, I wonder if it's not letting me. It says it's free, but it's not wanting to let me go in there. Oh, these are Photos Pro. I don't know how I got there to Photos Pro. Let me try that again. I'm not sure what's happening here. You know, you practice and practice and it's telling me Canva Pro for free. So maybe there's been a little change in the website recently. So anyway, I would put here a picture that represents explain. So the ones with the pro, but the ones that say free, they're supposed to be okay. I don't know what's happening there. So then I would probably change the text. And I would, um, of course, you're going to have different words for your students, and I would ask them to write their original sentences. Maybe a oh, there it goes. It locked my editor for a second. I'm not sure why. <laughs> this always happens in the middle of a presentation, and this is always a good chance for us to model growth mindset with our students, right? So um, that is Canva. Um, let me go back and just try one more time. Okay, try, try again. Learn from your mistakes. Okay. Now let's try one of those pictures again. So you go to photos. Let me see, you better work. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna take out that photo and it's just like um, Microsoft Office products or Google products that you you, the same resizing, the same sort of things that you can do there. So explain is what I would put there instead. And then I would um, give my de definition and maybe an example. What's the second step? It's restate. So um, let's see, I, I searched before and I really did not find a picture that I liked for restate. And all of these were pro and they don't really fit with my definition here at all. So what I would do then at that point is upload a photo, okay? And then I would um, have that photo. I do have it on my desktop, but um, to save time, I'll skip this part. But I would just replace each of the photos with maybe photos that um, I, I have downloaded to my desktop. Um, then it's really easy to add elements. So there are shapes you can add. Like if you wanted to accentuate the photo, you could put um, a shape behind it. Look at, there's all kinds of little doodles and um, clip art text. If there's not a text box and you want to add one, you can, and you get these different font styles. You could even add audio, okay, um, and video. 
And you, if you used it a lot, you would want to arrange your work in folders. So um, let me just try to upload a, a photo. I do have this uploaded already. Here is my um, restate. So I wanna use that one. I'm just, I'm gonna take that picture out. I'm gonna move that right there and resize it. And I would change that to restate and so on. So then I can also, um, the beautiful thing, let's say I wanted to add some text, okay? Say I wanted to add this text somewhere, okay? Um, with text, you can change the colors, you can change the fonts. It's really a robust tool. And if you're like me, not a design expert, it takes the guesswork out of design. I'm not, I'm not working for Canva, by the, way, by the way, but so many things. I personally, if I had students use Canva, I have used them use Canva before, um, but they really planned out what they were going to write first to save time. And then I always have a few students who are really hesitant and nervous about using technology. So a lot of times when I use a new tool, especially, or the first time to use that tool, I group students strategically so that someone is confident enough with the technology um, so that they're built for success in, in the strategic grouping. So that's Canva. Okay, so that's Canva. So next we go to the engage step. And I think um, the tool that we have for this one is really fun. So there are many ways you could have students engage, but um, we chose something that would be really easy for anyone, okay? And so with engage, we decided that a really good tool would be phrase it. Phrase it is completely free, very easy. You don't need an account. It's just really um, simple to use. So in this case, um, last term, my students read, we, well, we talked a lot about diets and nutrition and having a healthy lifestyle. And we read an article about the obesity problem in the United States and um, especially how fast food is to uh, blame for this. And we looked at some statistics about how many other countries um, are becoming obese. It used to be USA was number one, then Mexico was the number one, and now it's countries in the Middle East. And guess why? Guess why they're having a lot of problems with obesity? It's because the fast food industry is picking up in those countries. So on a Friday night to have fun, families go to McDonald's. <laughs> so um, the words in the article, I pulled out words that were new to students that um, would really build their academic vocabulary that they could impress their friends with, right? So the first word was ubiquitous. And it said something about since the 1980s, um, we've had a surplus of food in the United States because of different agricultural you know, technology. It's no longer family farms. And now food is ubiquitous. It's even when you go to the pharmacy or a gas station, you can see some junk food at the checkout, right? So I wanted students to be able to use this uh, word after we'd already gone through the explain, um, explain, restate, and construct. I wanted them to engage together to try to apply these words to different contexts. So with ubiquitous, um, a pair of students decided this would be a very timely photo. So they used phrase it, they uploaded this photo, and they added a speech bubble for this gentleman to say, face masks are ubiquitous these days. And when they showed me that, I was like thinking, yes, they do understand this word. They will be able to leave my class. And when they hear this word, they encounter it, and maybe they'll even be able to use it in the future. The other word was reluctant. So a different team was assigned the word reluctant. And so we had been, we had gone on from the topic of um, diet and nutrition, and we were having more discussions about the pandemic. And we were talking in class, who's getting their vaccination and so forth. And so this team also decided to upload a picture that showed the idea of reluctance. So the little girl, they put a, uh, a thought bubble there and she says, I'm afraid of needles. And um, then she tells the nurse, I'm reluctant to get my shot. 
So again, students were really showing me that they could use these words, that they understood it more than a surface level, that they could apply to different situations. So I'm going to do a demonstration of phrase it. And what I'd like you to do is watch because we're going to have you try this um, engagement with some other participants here in just a moment. Okay, so you just go to phrase it. Okay, you go to, um, you can upload from your di device or use a random stock photo. photo. Um, the random stock photos are not very good. Um, whenever I try, there always seems to be a picture of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. But let's just look and see what comes up this time. Oh, it's a dog, that's much better. So they can use a random photo, but you know, I don't think that's gonna work for me. So I'm gonna go back. I'm going to upload a photo, okay? So um, let's say that um, this was a sentence by another group. Um, I, you know, I'm living here on the coast, southern, um, here in Southern California, and I'm in San Diego County. And here along the coast, especially here in North County, we have a lot of professional, um, professional surfers from Brazil and Venezuela. I've had some of them in my class even. And so another group, um, with one of the surfers in their group, um, they were talking, how can we depict the ubiquitous? And, um, you know, they went with their alpha male, <laughs> the member in their group who was kind of um, leading. And um, they chose this photo that I have saved to my desktop. Let me just get that ready. And so they found this photo, I believe they found it on Pixabay. And so it's good to show students those different websites. Most of the time they're just gonna use Google images, right? But um, it, it might be time to start teaching them about copyright, especially if they take off and start creating things that they publish online. I notice that usually I need to explain to students the difference between speech bubbles and thought bubbles. So um, in this case, it looks like no one is close enough in, um, to her to, she's not really having a conversation. She's maybe just thinking to herself. So you just choose the speech or thought bubble that you want and you just drag it to wherever you want it to go. So students can usually do that if you explain how to drag. And then they can add text. So you can type in whatever you want. This is what that team wrote. Okay, if I want it bigger, you can definitely enlarge it. Just go to that stretch right there. There are also different ways to um, have the font appearing. So if I go here, yeah, that's hard to read. Uh, I like that one. No, not all caps. I think I'll stay with what I had originally. So there are a few font options and the drama is not really a whole bunch. It's just kind of filters. So there's Lomo, mm, Nashville, what's that? Nah, Toaster. No, nah, well, that's kind of pretty if it's sunset. Gotham City, probably not, no. So I'm just gonna stay with no drama, okay? So then I go here to the right, preview and save, and I can email it. So this is where I ask students to email it to me. I tell them to put my email there. Um, I'm not gonna email it, I'll just save it. And then there still is an option to email it over here on the left or here in the middle, but I'm gonna download it to my desktop. Download image for free. I never pay for anything. And I just save it to the desktop. And then what you could have students do is either email it to you or you could have maybe um, a shared Google slideshow and you ask them to um, put their images on different slides. And there you have a picture dictionary for your class, right? So this is a, um, a fun and easy way to have students engage with vocabulary that you have explained, they have restated, you've done some construction and so forth. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna send you to breakout rooms. And when you get there, 
please select a facilitator. This person is basically just going to get you started and keep you on task, okay? Then um, it's good to um, have someone be your timekeeper. We'll send you some um, broadcast through Zoom to your rooms telling you um, when you're getting close to the time being up, but um, we'd like you to have a timekeeper just kind of modeling good practice for when you have your students go to breakout rooms. And then we need a tech lead. So whoever in your group feels comfortable with sharing their screen. So I usually have um, a Zoom orientation for my students and then I have to demonstrate again with a slideshow I created about how to share. So once I get to know who is able to share in my class, usually that person is in a group and is the screen share for the group. So the share button you probably know by now is on the black bar and it just says new share. Okay, hopefully, um, hopefully this meeting was set up so you can share. When you get to your group, say hello after you've, and then choose your role. And then, you know, tell a little bit what you teach and where you teach, okay? The screen sharer, you're going to open up whatever website you want to use to find an image, okay? And I'll explain what kind of image that will be in just a moment. And download that picture to your desktop. In the breakout room, you're going to share your screen and you're going to choose as a group one of the four steps of this six step process we have gone over so far. Explain or restate or construct or engage. You choose one of the steps from the six step process. You're going to search for a photo, okay? And download it a photo that represents your step. So you remember in Canva that I demonstrated, I, it was hard for me to find a picture about restate. So you're really going to have to work on, and this is really great for your students, they're working on visual literacy, one of the new literacies. So they'll need to figure out what would be a good image to represent, explain, or restate, or construct, or engage. Okay, so you'll find that picture. Then you're going to go to phraseit.net. Um, and I believe, Susan, if you can share that in the chat right now, phraseit.net. It is done. Okay, thank you. And you're going to upload the photo, okay, add a speech or thought bubble, and work together as a team to enter text that explains the step you chose and what it means. Save the image just like I did. So save it and download it to your desktop. We're going to give you 30 minutes. I don't think so. I, don't think so. I think we can only give them 15 minutes. Only 15 minutes? Yeah, <laughs> so because gonna we're going to run out work. of time. Thank you. You're going to need to work pretty quickly. So we'll give you about 15 minutes to do this. Um, so screen share, you're really going to have to kind of take charge of this. But facilitator, you're, you're the cheerleader, OK? So um, get ready. You're going to join your rooms. Um, I, will... I shall open the rooms now. Yes. Thank you. Um, Susan will open the rooms. Join. And if you have questions, press the help button, please. Oh, I thought I, I, I did random assignment, but it's not. Um, OK, I'm just going to assign. Redo it. Well, we can do it again if you like. I'm just going to resign. Yeah. So look at the instructions again. I hope it's clear. Usually what I do is I copy and paste instructions like this, or actually usually what I do is I, I give the instructions and ask students to restate back to me. That's a really important workplace skill that they state back and confirm their understanding of things, right? Okay, welcome back everybody. Okay, I see that one group, um, it looks like someone chose Marin, uh, shared, in the chat, I, hopefully you know that. It's really um, useful sometimes if you wanna share a file so that students can look at it in, in their groups when you're in breakout, you could share a file in the chat for Zoom. So I'm gonna open yours, Marin, if that's okay. Um, hopefully you'll open okay for me. I hope you And um, we'll have you just describe it a little bit. That's mm -hmm. downloading very slowly. Ah! If not, I have it. I can share my okay, screen. Okay, you want to go ahead, Susan, and share? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, continue. And here it is. You see it, Maureen? Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can make it so it's more. I wasn't planning on sharing there. Okay. 
go ahead and talk about what you did. Okie dokie. Um, do you want to start, Winnie? Or I can start. <laughs> um, we found this. We found this picture. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was muted. Go ahead, Marin. I, <laughs> I was muted. <laughs> so the just so this picture, I um, we started off at the at the, the first uh, phrase it site, and we ended up going to um, Unsplash, right? Yes. And so we kind of bounced around, and then we found we just typed in the word construct, um, and this this picture came up and. I liked it. Actually, I, I liked it because it reminded me of my dad because he he was a carpenter. And but the, the cool. description underneath it was um, someone making a book or we thought it was someone making a book. We, we weren't thought sure. it was someone making a book. That's yeah. what it was. And there's a book some, cover, in fact. Yeah, yes. we, we guessed. And there's a some type of instrument there. We were also we thought maybe a chisel. Um, and so we were saying that um, when you're constructing something, and you're you're learning a new word um, when you're when you make this type of when you have this type of project you're you're actually constructing the the understanding of it too in your mind and you need tools and so unsplash and phrase it were our tools um, you need manipulation and so in, it was a hands on experience for us that we had to type you know in the keyboard and we had to drag pictures and download and. Uh, drag in thought bubbles and uh, type in information in the thought bu bubble, save it, all of that. And that was kind of our manipulation part of it. And then we had to kind of refine our, our end product and, and see how we wanted to um, change it so that it was perfect and a perfect understanding of the word construct. So we hope. Great. Yay. <laughs> nice job, Marin and Winnie. Thank so you. Let me Thank ask you. Um, do you think your students could do this? We debated on that. Honestly. Yeah. So you it, know, would, my, it might be very difficult. Yeah. The older students who are not comfortable with technology and would uh, shy away from this. Exactly. Project. So I think what you would want to do is break it down into steps. So first, you would maybe just have students day one, choose which word. Day two, or maybe that same lesson, that same class meeting, they maybe write the sentence that they're going to add. And then day three, they just find the photo and someone saves it or they send it to you or something. And then day four. So, you know, breaking it up into steps mm -hmm. probably That's would save some frustration, you know, if, if they're just learning. Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I think you know that anything, just like how we're teaching our subjects, we need to scaffold the skills. That's the same thing for technology. We need to scaffold. Um, so hopefully you found that to be something that students could use. They could just use those photos. They're not the greatest, but they could just keep going through the random photos um, on the site and maybe find something. Before you, so, bef oh, before you go on, does anybody else wanna share? Would anybody else like to share their screen and show us what you created? What you constructed? No. No? Okay. Uh, we'll share. Okay, okay great. You. Yeah. Uh, can I just share it out if I share my screen? I mean, <laughs> I can share the screen and put, yeah, yeah, so you can see. Okay. Oops. What happened to it? I've lost you guys. Oh, okay. So you, we see you. Yeah, okay. That's good. <laughs> All righty. Here it is. Uh, so we can, we had the word engage. We picked the word engage. Does anybody else in our group want to explain what we did? Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, interacting with the word uh, engage would be to give the students a way to interact with the word. And so we have a stu uh, one of the students saying, I'm into it, I'm using it, I'm, I'm engaging. Yeah. So, um, and we just like this picture because the kids were engaging with bubbles. <laughs> so um, I, it was good. I think that overall it was a good experience just to, to, to actually use this um, platform because sometimes in these kind of sessions, we learn so much and we, we you know, to, to actually have hands-on experience is really good because we got engaged. We engaged in this uh lesson you know so it so it was a double double um purpose thing yeah um and, and maybe 
Yay. Yay. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. and as far as students using this, I think if we did it together, the, the speech bubbles are great because they can make conversations and stuff. So if, you know, if for me, it was a little bit hard. We were trying to figure out how, what are we exactly we're supposed to do? But I think if you simplify it and mm -hmm. maybe do it all together, that, yeah. you, could, uh, you know, that it could work really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah remember, yeah. remember what I had to do for the Padlet, how I had to go through all that process. So it really does, you know, if you do it as a class and then have the students do it outside, it's, it's good. And remember, we only gave you 15 minutes. Oh, That's an unheard of amount of time. <laughs> to yeah, do something. I think you, Maggie, you reminded me of the I do, we do, you do. So maybe there are three different times. The first time I, I'm modeling, the second time we're doing it together, and then the third time you're going off in groups to do it together. That would be kind of the model we follow a lot of times in our lesson plans. So um, thank you for sharing. Um, we are now on to discuss. So in my class, what I usually do is when there are we're doing a reading or watching a video, um, I teach kind of advanced ESL, but um, it, it probably wouldn't matter what, what level you're teaching. If it's beginning ESL, they're working on, you know, basic word list words, the, the, the most frequently used words. Uh, if you're teaching more advanced or ASE, adult secondary, ABE, you're probably wanting to teach students the academic word list words. So when I have a reading, I'm looking through there and I'm looking at the words and I'm comparing with the academic word list. And then I usually write the conversation questions, but I think it's a good idea to actually have the students do that. Take some of the work off of you. And um, that could be a whole grammar lesson built around question formation as well. So for discuss, um, I like to, as I said, I write the conversation questions based on the vocabulary that we're um, working on. For this particular one, I know you can't see it, but I just wanted to give you a screenshot. This is from Canvas from the discussion forum there. Um, in this case, it was, we were working on phrasal verbs for the whole term. And so um, one way you can have students discuss in Zoom, I copy some conversation questions using the vocabulary into the chat. I send them to breakout rooms and they have to uh, say complete sentences to answer the questions using the vocabulary. And then I take those same questions and I plug them into the discussion board and now they're having to write their answers and communicate with different students than those that they were um, communicating with in the breakout rooms. So um, let me show you a sample of this because uh, this, was, this was a while back. Um, I started teaching my classes hybrid in 2015. So at my, in my program, the classes are four days a week, like most ESL programs, three hour classes, four days a week. And we decided, oh, let's, let's have them do online work for the fourth day instead of having to come to class. So we were using Canvas, having them do their writing, kind of flipping the classroom, okay? So I was really nervous at the beginning. Um, I was thinking, you know, I'm going to put all this work into those three hours a week for Canvas, and they're not going to do anything. That's what I was thinking. Well, the first time I taught the hybrid, it was in the summer. You know, students in the evening. In the evening, in the summer, I had everything going against me, and I thought it was not going to happen, but I had to give it a try. Well, I made the questions engaging enough, and they had practiced together in person using um, conversation, using the vocabulary, that when our class got finished on Wednesday evenings, when students were used to using Canvas and the discussion forums, they would go home Wednesday night after class and be um, having their conversations online. So it all depends on, on you, on the teacher. You have to be present, you have to model, you have to uh, put very clear expectations, as I'm going to explain in a minute. So um, I have the questions and I underlined the words I wanted them to use. And I just, I'm just going to scroll about halfway through. Okay. They were only had to answer three questions. And this was so all in one day they did this? This was from Thursday to Sunday. Okay. I'm, I'm not wow. even quarter of the way yet. I'm not even... I mean, I don't want to keep going because I'm probably making you dizzy, but the conversations went on and on and on. And you can see they went off of the topic a little bit, but I think um, they were doing so much writing. It was really amazing. And then when they came back to, together on Monday, they had some connections. They, they knew each other a little bit better and they had things to talk about. 
So it all depends on how you set it up, teachers. And these are my recommendations for that. Well, first of all, I will just say that if you want students speaking, you should use Flipgrid. How many of you are familiar with Flipgrid? Can you type yes or no in the chat? Um, this would be a whole nother hands-on three-hour workshop or something because um, there's a lot to teach with Flipgrid, um, but it's great for the speaking. So um, if you're an ESL teacher and you have students do EL civics and there's a unit where they have to do a role play, um, this would be really useful. Um, I'm not going to, we don't have enough time because it's it, it can be complicated at, to set it up first, but once you get it set up, it's, it's really easy for students to post. At the end, um, once you have the, I had every week different questions. And in this past summer, um, there were some students I just felt at the beginning, I'm not getting to know them like I usually can face to face. So when they started posting their um, their videos in response to some questions and I watched them over the weekends, I got to know my students so much better and I could hear their pronunciation and I could target some different you know, things that were going on in their grammar and so forth, okay? Yes, Maggie, you can have video responses as well. So Flipgrid is like a discussion board, for, but for speaking, creating videos. At the end, I was able to select one video from each student. You know, on the last day of class, it's always like, hmm, what do we do today? We usually have presentations or, you know, something, but instead we watched each one of their best videos. So this is kind of what the Flipgrid um, look like. The, I'm sorry, the mixtape. Mixtape is choosing your best um, submissions. These are my tips for having successful online discussions. You have to have a very structured and you have to model and have explicit expectations. And you have to, what I do is I post my own responses. Students love to get to know us. And when they get to know some things about us, they feel closer and that keeps them coming to our classes. You must have already given them some of the practice, going through explain, restate, construct, engage, and then discuss. You, they, you can't just throw new words at them today and have them go into a discussion board tomorrow. You have to give them some practice first. Um, they should answer questions about themselves. The research from Marzano and others who um, have written about vocabulary instruction, when we talk about ourselves using new vocabulary, we remember it better. Um, teacher presence, I talked about clear expectations about how and when to reply to classmates and a rubric. <clears throat> so this is what my um, discussion boards in Canvas look like. You can see here, this is a template. So I just put in the new questions with the new vocabulary words each time. So write complete sentences to any, whatever number of the following questions. So if I have 10 questions, I don't require all 10. That's kind of a lot for, for this. Um, <clears throat> I may ask them to write answers to questions that have vocabulary that they'd never heard of before to practice that. Um, as you can see, the sentences must include the vocabulary words, Post your answers by, you know, um, 12 or 11.55 p.m. Friday, okay, for example. So any of you who've ever taken an online course, you, you've probably seen this before. It's very standard um, for online courses. When you have finished and submitted your por uh, post, reply to at least two classmates. Post by Sunday at 11.55 p.m., for example. I usually give my students at least one week to post uh, and then reply to classmates. If there's, um, ask a question, if there's something you do not understand or something you want to know more about, that's how they can reply to their classmates, ask a question. They can write something new they learned about their classmate, write about something interesting in your classmates' posts, mention similarities or differences you notice between your classmate and yourself. Because sometimes they don't know what to write. So you give them some options, then I model. The first couple of times I reply to everybody's posts. If you have a large class, you can um, ask students each week to be a moderator. That will help you know, free up some of the work for you. But I, I guarantee you if, you, if you do these regularly, like maybe once a week, students get into the routine and they're really retaining the vocabulary and practicing the writing as well. I put the rubric right there at the bottom of the discussion um, instructions. 
very low stakes. And of course I teach non-credit. So, but you know, I say that if you answer more of the questions or reply to more than two classmates, you get extra points. So some students you're gonna see that maybe in Zoom, they're a little bit quiet, but in these forums where they have time to think and there's not that pressure and maybe they're introverts, they come to life in these kinds of activities. Okay, so we're on the last, last step play. As I mentioned at the beginning, Dr. Marzano says, never, never skip this. Um, it looks like almost all of you have heard of Quizlet and hopefully more of you have used it. Have you, when you were face-to-face -face with your students um, before March of last year, did you ever have students play Quizlet Live? Can you type yes or no in the chat? Okay, so I found out the hard way. The first time I had students play Quizlet Live, we were in the computer lab and um, I did the team game, but that doesn't work. They have to sit together, okay? So, okay, it's very similar to Kahoot, you'll see Francis. So um, how I would, do that in the classroom is I would do the set up the game in Quizlet, the Quizlet Live. It would randomly make teams and they would have to get up and move and find each other. And then they had their phones. All of my students had a phone. They set their phones next to each other. And um, what they would do is then um, they would be able to see everybody's questions so that they could reply faster. So I'm going to show you this brief video. We have just a little time left. So you can see from the teacher's side, and then I'll just very quickly show you how to, you set it up. So this is a video from my class. Um, we did a Quizlet Live. It, this was like one of the first times that we did it, well, first or second. And then we're just figuring it out. Quizlet.live, not .com, but dot .live. You enter this code. 617-757. If you have two devices, it might be easy just to do this on your phone. What you're going to do, I'm going to see, um, I'm, I'm going to create the game and it's going to be an individual game. And what you will see is, um, I believe you will see a definition and you choose which word matches the definition. Is everybody ready? Here we go. Dolphins, Maria, what? So it gives you a name. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. So this is the Wow, look at the orcas and the camel and the pen. Okay, the camel's surging ahead. Cheetah's not far behind. Here go the camels though. But the cheetah, and the camel are neck at neck. And now the Siberian tiger, but now the cheetah went ahead. And it looks like it's a race for the finish between cheetah and camel. Cheetah and camel are, are neck and neck. Cheetah and, okay, camel's ahead by one. And camel's ahead, camel's taking the lead. Camel is breaking away from the pack. And so sorry, cheetah. Okay, so we have, Relax. Here we again. Wow. Wow. Oh, no, no. Sorry, right, guys. I'm very competitive. <laughs> He's very competitive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love to hear students laugh, don't you? Um, the pressure is off. They're having fun. And I guarantee once you play it once, once they figure out how the game works, um, and you ask them, do you want to do it again? Yeah, yeah, let's do it again. So this is the individual mode. We're almost out of time, but I'll just show you. What you can, as a lot of you probably know, when you have your account, your teacher account in Quizlet, um, what you can do is you can search for other people's lists and import those into your account and modify them. So I found this one that we don't have time, unfortunately, to play, but it was technology for instruction. Oh, you want to play? Okay, Susan. So we will play. I guess we'll take the time to do this. So once you, you have your deck, okay? Um, then this is not my deck, it's from Twitic, okay, whoever that user is. You just open it, you do need to be signed in to your account as the teacher, and you go here to live, okay? This is a short one that we're gonna do. 
Um, so I click on live and my computer is very slow. There we go. Um, I, do, I don't recommend the random teams for remote instruction. It, it, you know, some students will not know how to do it and the whole team will then suffer. So that's why I do individual and I give the option that we do it again and again. Um, so we go to individuals and I select. There are two ways you can have the definition with the different words, or you can have the word with the different definitions. I think probably the easier way is to see the definition and select the right word because reading all of the different def definitions will take too much time. So I'm gonna select definition in term, okay? And um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this into the chat. If you have a separate device like your phone. Oh, I'm sorry, Susan. Yeah, I forgot about that, darn, okay. Um, we'll do this one really quick instead, I forgot, Susan. So um, let me go ahead and um, put that in the chat. And so you can see the student view now, okay? And if you so have a phone, it, it would be a good idea to do this on your phone. Yeah, and if you have a phone, you would pro it'd probably be a lot easier. You're gonna open a browser, go to www.quizlet.live, not .com. Then it's gonna ask for the code and you put in that code. If you have a QR code scanner, you could just open that on your phone and scan the code. Okay, and I see long so far. And you know what? I'm going to join the game too, maybe. Why not? Okay. So long has some competition. <laughs> okay, what was the code? <clears throat> Here's the code, 788855. So you can see if you don't want to play, you can just um, see the student's view here. Are you ready, Long? I think you're my competition, Long. You're the only one. Okay, here we go, Long, are you ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna have to go here in between and, and um, start the game. Here we go. Okay. Oh, what happened? I don't think you can do it that way. You can't do it that way. I can't play, sorry. I three think people Long, are playing, three people are playing. I think Long, you're gonna win. Oh, it didn't take you to the number. So sorry, Anna. So anyway, um, let me try that again. I think Long is going to win. That's my prediction. I'm betting on Long. Um, but let me go here for a second. What was the code? Um, I can't interrupt to, the game right you now. You have to but, wait till the game is over. Yeah. So anyway, this is the teacher view. This is what you're going to see. And it's kind of nice because it gives students an ass assigned um, animal instead of an, their name. Um, and they, when they go there, um, they don't have to put their real name, I tell them, if they want to play anonymously. But this is really um, fun. Um, it's using a tool that a lot of you already use, and it's including the last step of play. So this is how we can do this in remote instruction. I highly recommend when you go back to in-person, if your students do have phones, to do the Quizlet Live in class as a team. It's really fun. They get so into it. My problem is I always have a math instructor next door and I'm too loud. My class is too loud for him, but it's really fun. And we have Fran. Fran yeah. won the <laughs> unicorn and the tigers got second. And you can look at the statistics and it will show you um, which, which one students um, got confused that they had problems with. So you can ask them, hey, let's go back and look at those words it doesn't seem like everybody's really clear on those, so let's review. So that's the fun part, okay? That is play. All right, so we're almost out of time. Um, that again is Quizlet Live. You just go into your Quizlet account and you choose the live button of the different activities. So again, these are the six steps. I'm sure that you know of other tools that you could use, but again, we wanted to show you something that you could hopefully use tomorrow, okay? So it's simple enough. Again, scaffolding baby steps, okay? So explain, restate, construct, engage, discuss, and play.
And let's see <laughs> if we got our success. So do you understand the six step, step process? We're going to give you know. the we're going to give you the PowerPoint in a minute. Yes. Um, and I hope you learn something new for teaching vocabulary. And we hope you'll feel comfortable with this something new trying to integrate it into your class. If yes. we have done that, we have been successful. And of course, I hope that all these ideas, you have one new idea that you can put into your backpack. So I'd like you to share in the chat, what is one new tool or one new activity Something new you will try after this, if you can share in the chat. So we'll be sharing the link um, to the slides so that you can revisit them um, in just one moment. Yeah, I think Marin, right I, think, I think you'll see that the students retain the vocabulary better. You know, we have to, have the repetition and recycling because just just introducing a vocabulary word and having them work out on it for just a day it won't stick with them if it's a new word you're going to try padlet kelly i think you'll really love it try quizlet live winnie i think your students will have a lot of fun with it yeah i, I the first time it's kind of like they're learning how the game goes and then after that i ask them do you want to do it again yeah yeah and so actually you have to cut them off after a while because they want to play and you know I had one student he just kept winning every time and sometimes I say can you just maybe just take a break for this next game give someone else a chance anyway and I want to say this six step process revolutionized the way I teach vocabulary because before that I was just taking the words having the students write them down and then testing them and they weren't learning them so um this really helps them learn and there's the link for the slides maybe we can put that in the chat box christy yes i will copy that into the chat oh it's and the long version but anyway if you have any questions um we can answer them if not we have made questions for you <laughs> just in case um you don't have any questions any to ask. questions anybody um let me see sorry are you sharing or am i no you are okay that's what i thought Sorry about that scrolling there. Um, so any questions? I actually, I'm trying to post this. Let me try that one more time. Uh-huh, list of tools. Um, yeah, so uh, on here, um, there is uh, each of the tools we, we looked at. Um, when Susan or I do this as a face-to-face in-person workshop, hands-on, we give a website with many, many other tools as well. Um, and we could probably share that um, at another time for sure. But if you think this is something your agency would like, um, tell your administrator that you want OTAN to come and do a presentation. Susan and I could do a workshop with you. I don't, you know, not in person, probably just yet. So we could do a longer webinar where everybody's doing some hands-on as well. Yeah, and, and we specifically went for one tool per technique because we wanted you to be able to understand the process and not just have a bunch of tools thrown at you. But we did make some questions if uh, you don't yeah. have any to ask. Okay. So, um, Susan, I don't have a lot of time um, to incorporate all the six steps. How can I maximize student learning? So I would say you need to do the six steps over and over again, but not on the same day. So I would decide on what your vocabulary words that you want the students to learn that week are, and then do these activities throughout the week, having them use a different step each time. Okay. Um, you used a lot of tools, Christy. How long does yeah. it take you to make a lesson like Thing Link? Well, first of all, let me just say, I don't use all of these tools all of the time. So we wanted to give you different options and you like take baby steps and find the tool that works for you, for your subject area and your, and your students. But for example, with the Think Link, um, whenever I've made a Thing Link before, yeah, it does take a little bit time to set it up in the beginning. 
But you can just go to ThingLink and do a search. More and more ESL teachers and more and more subject area instructors are putting their thing links there for you, for everyone to use. So you could just search the gallery and find something. But when I wanted to create my own um, thing link for students, um, for my classes, yep, there's some upfront, upfront work, um, some time that I have to spend on the weekends, but I can reuse those activities again and again. So um, maybe just making modifications. Um, Susan, my students are beginning. They're, they're low ESL and they are not very good with computers or technology at all. I don't know that my students can handle all of this. What do you think? So my experience has always been with low beginning and I found that if you go very slowly and model like that journey I took you on with Padlet, it's all about how you model it. And after you model it, maybe you think you got it, but the students their heads haven't wrapped around it yet. So by being able to have them show you what they don't understand helps you to remodel it and remodel it until they can do it. And once they learn how to do these tools, they just take off and they love it. So I would say, yeah, it takes time, but it's well worth the time. If you don't finish the book, it's better not to finish the book and have the students really learn something. Yeah, they're really learning two languages at once in that case, right? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you're, when you close out here, you're going to have the evaluation open, but I will copy that into the chat in just a moment. Um, here's our contact information. Um, and as Melinda posted in the chat, if you have training requests, go to support at otan.us or email Melinda directly mholt at otan.us. Um, check the calendar. Um, hopefully you are getting emails like I do every week about um, OTAN offerings, everything from just um, office hours for a question you have to um, workshops. And watch for Susan's um, workshop on ThingLink. I think you would really um, love to start using that. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your school year.